عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Once again, my brothers, my sisters, we always praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek His protection from, we seek His protection against all evil and we ask Him every goodness, not just for us, but for humanity at large. And we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all those who were sent from the very beginning to remove us from darkness and to take us to the light. Amen. And we ask Allah to bless their companions and to bless every one of us and to grant us all the best of this world and the next. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, every year the month of Ramadan comes. And this month it brings about a different joy. We become happy people, mashallah, during the month of Ramadan, especially when we're about to see the moon. And then once the moon is sighted and the excitement of the first few nights of Taraweeh sort of dwindles, we find the masjid is slightly empty and people start beginning to feel like, gosh, I've still got 27 days to go, right? And then when you're in this part of the world, subhanallah, it becomes so prolonged, especially during these years. But Allah compensates it. But a few years down the line, you guys will be having the shortest fasts ever, right? We might have to come here for Ramadan at that time. <laughs> for now, you can come over by us. It's fine, no problem. It's actually permissible to travel to a place where the fast is shorter. Nothing wrong to do that. You can actually travel to a place where the fast is shorter in order to spend Ramadan with your children or those who might not be so well or those who just cannot keep such a long fast. It's not prohibited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. I know you're looking at me like, are you going to give us the money to go on holiday? You know? But my brothers and sisters, Ramadan is a blessed month. It's a blessed month. When we see the moon, that goodness, and when... You know, the lights are turned on in the masjid and the people are fulfilling their salah. And even in the homes, the environment is such that wallahi, the blessedness, you feel it. You can actually feel it. It's different. The food you consume during the evening in Ramadan has a taste to it that is different from that which was eaten, even if it were the same dish before or after Ramadan. It's a blessing. But my brothers and sisters, Remember that that initial hype, the initial high that we're sorry, I'm not talking of cannabis, not at all. But the initial high that you feel, subhanallah, we need to maintain that. You need to keep going. The Prophet ﷺ has taught us about how the best of deeds are those that are done regularly, even if they're little, small deeds but done regularly. So when we start Ramadan, yes, we're excited. The first day we were with the Imam, we heard the whole of Surah Baqarah. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. The next day we're not there. Why? Hey, it was a bit long yesterday. SubhanAllah. By the way, what's the score guys? Anyone knows? One nil. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al al azim. One nil. SubhanAllah. People are following football. No, it's okay. It is one nil by the way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. <laughs> People are asking us, why did you time it such that you're going to Cardiff tomorrow? I said, just as well, we didn't go to Cardiff today, you know. But my brothers and sisters, that will only be understood by the football fans, right? Uh, so that hype, we have a hype. You know, we support a football team and we get so excited. I see people... MashaAllah, they look so religious. They weep, they cry tears when their team is losing. I promise you, they make dua like they haven't even made for their own mothers-in-law. They make dua like they have never made for their family members. Just for a team, for a ball to be kicked this way and that way. The point I want to raise is look at how passionate we become. We'll follow the team and keep going and the players and everything else. But I promise you the season of Ramadan is far more important. We need to follow it with equally important, with, meaning with greater zeal. We need to make sure that we actually have this within us to say, look, this is the month. I am definitely going to make an effort because my brothers and sisters, without an effort, it's not going to come. You know, don't think that Allah will push you along all the way. No, you got to push yourself because Allah gave you the energy. Make the effort. Pro I promise you, without the effort, it's not going to happen. If we didn't make an effort, this event was not going to take place. 
And if you didn't make an effort, this event was not going to take place. You made an effort, we made an effort, we all tried to get this thing coming, get, you know, get it together. That's why it is here. And that's why we're all here. Imagine if somebody didn't think of it, and if somebody, if you guys didn't think of coming and contributing towards the success of this beautiful event with such a lovely, uh, you know, place that, a venue that we've had, alhamdulillah, I was just telling one of the brothers, this venue is superb. Perhaps we should do more here. Subhanallah. Will each one of you bring along 10 of your friends with you? Inshallah. Yeah. And we can have a much more uh, impressive event, inshallah. By the will of Allah. Who knows? Well, if you're really keen, you can always write up to light upon light, inshallah, and tell them that we will make sure that it happens, inshallah. So, if you don't make an effort, you're not going to be able to achieve. When the first day of Ramadan comes, already you should have an intention that this month I'm going to dedicate. I'm going to dedicate. When Ramadan comes, it is a month where you will feel fatigued. You will feel tired. Your sleep is going to be upside down, especially in this part of the world. Your chores are going to be difficult to fulfill. The night is not going to be so easy, as short as it is. You've got to eat, you've got to make Maghrib, Isha, Taraweeh. Perhaps the Hajjud becomes a little bit easier. You might want to shorten it slightly. You're going to have to have Fajr and your sleeping times. And you will also hear about the debates regarding the timings of when you're allowed to put a date in your mouth or not. Right? All those debates are in their places. You might be thinking, well, please tell us what's the ruling. Do you want to know it? No, you don't. I might come up with a third opinion and I'm going to cause problems here. I'm not from this part of the world, so I leave it to the local scholars. They've probably studied it more than I have. But I want to tell you, there can be, there can be more than one correct opinion. Did you hear what I said? I'm a person who firmly believes that if you actually, in a matter of ijtihad, in a matter of, you know, uh, where the opinions are valid, you can actually have more than one valid opinion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us and accept our fasting. So it's not good enough to say your guys' fasting is not accepted because you know you, you ate for an hour more than we ate. If it is a valid opinion based on evidence, alhamdulillah, or based on what scholars who are reputable are saying, then alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance. I know it's a big debate, big debate. The difference is what, one hour, two hours between in the timing approximately? Can someone tell me? About an hour, an hour's difference, yeah. So we ask Allah to make it easy for every one of us. Whether you're following the later time, the earlier time, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. Remember that. So you need to have it within you in advance. You need to know I'm going to be tired. It's not going to be easy, but I'm going to keep going because we want the pleasure of Allah. Allah has promised you Jannah and Jannah is not free. And Jannah is not such an easy uh, achievement. When the hadith says, Allah inna sil'at Allahi ghaliya. Indeed, the commodity of Allah is expensive. It's dear, which means it costs. You have to pay for it. If it was something so easy, he wouldn't have said that. That's why when there are deeds that you do and Allah says in return you get Jannah, that deed is not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be really difficult. You need to make an effort. I gave an example a few days ago of how when the hadith says to serve your parents, you will gain Jannah. You need to know that's not going to be easy. It's going to be one of the most difficult things I'm ever going to be able to do. Especially as you get older and you've got your own family with your own kids. And then you still have to juggle between your wife and your parents and so on and your family members, etc. That is why Allah says you will get Jannah. You see, because it's tough. It's very difficult. It's not easy. Same applies to the month of Ramadan. To stand with Iman and Ihtisab. To fast with Iman and Ihtisab. The hadith says you will be totally forgiven. One narration says you will be given Jannah. What's Iman and what's Ihtisab? Iman is the conviction in your heart, the belief that I'm doing this for the sake of Allah, for the pleasure of Allah, to earn the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ihtisab means I'm doing this expecting a reward from Allah. Allah promises me a reward and I'm doing this for this reward. Some people say, I don't want to do it for the reward. I don't want to do it for this and for that. I just want to do it for myself. Well, as a Muslim, you need to rectify that intention. You do it for the pleasure of Allah. Allah instructed you, that is why you are going to do it. Yes, and you will be happy to do it. 
So you are actually doing it for the sake of Allah and you will achieve goodness from it. But you need to make your mind up from now. This Ramadan, I'm going to read Quran. And I'm going to make sure come what may. I'm going to cover the entire Quran in this month. Many of us, unfortunately, perhaps the majority of us, we don't complete the entire Quran in Ramadan, right? I want to teach you something this year that will make life so easy for you. From now, you can download an app. Perhaps on Quran Central, you can download that app, Quran Central. Choose one of your favorite reciters. And guess what? If the reciter is reading a little bit slow, what you do is let the reciter read a little bit and you repeat after the reciter. And you repeat after the reciter. If you have the opportunity to open the Quran in front of you, you can hear the recitation and read after the reciter. And you just finish a quarter juz after every salah. A quarter juice. What's that? Not more than 10 minutes after every salah. Or sit in the evening and do it for 30 minutes. You've got the whole juice done. Sit in the evening, sit in the morning while you're waiting for iftar, whatever. But you need to promise yourself from now. That's one way of doing things. And that's for those perhaps who might not be professional in recitation of the Quran. And you will perfect or improve your Quran. But if you don't have a plan, you're not going to get anywhere. You don't have a goal. What's going to happen? That football match, you don't even know where the goalposts are. And I think some players are like that, the way they operate. Open goalposts and the guy flicks it right over. And you wonder, gosh, did you see, man? You know? <laughs> May Allah grant us ease. Snack Productions. <laughs>